As you can see as you're watching this video, I'm an old fart, which means I have mostly an old fart's equipment. In this case, it's a Nikon D7000, which came out around 2012, six years ago, which makes it ancient by any standard, any modern standard. I'm also going to use a 50 millimeter f1.4 lens to do this macro photography and I'm going to use a couple of modern for me hacks to try to get things right with flash. I'm turn the camera on, pop up the flash and then show you the two things I'm going to use initially. First of all Raynox Super Macro Conversion Lens. That's the box that comes in. And then you also get this kind of cool carrying case. Plastic, protect the lens very well. These are the two pieces that come with it. Here's the actual lens. What you do is screw in the lens to this piece. Like that. Now this is a clip-in lens, not a clip-on lens. People call it a clip-on lens, but it actually clips into the lip of the lens, if you have the right size lens. Like this. So there you have your macro lens on, and are just about ready to go. The second modern thing I'm going to use is this LumaQuest soft screen. Now this isn't really so modern since I bought it about a year ago. I looked up the prices on them and they're anywhere from 10 bucks to about 15 bucks on Amazon. Well this uh, Rhinox macro conversion lens, high definition, is about $65 on Amazon. What you do with the soft screen, first of all, is plug this thing into the camera's hot shoe, like this. I don't know if you can see that. And then you fold the soft screen over the popped up lens and attach it to the Nikon logo, <clears throat> or the Nikon screen, whatever the heck that thing is. <clears throat> Anyway, what you have to do if you're going to handhold this lens and get any decent depth of field is put it on its narrowest aperture, which in the case of this camera with this lens, this lens particularly, has just a, an f-stop of f-16. Other cameras will have, other lenses will have f-22, f 35, 45, whatever they go to. But this camera, also, this camera will only flash sync <clears throat> with the pop up lens, with the pop up flash at 1 300th of a second. Now, I'm going to set the pop up flash on manual one half power so we don't overpower things when we photograph with it. That pretty much is the setup that I plan on using and uh, since I'm an old fart I gotta hit the can. So I'm gonna show some examples of what I've done with this lens and then I'll be back.
now that you've seen what sort of shots you can get using a 50 millimeter lens, you might get the idea in your head that you want to get really close in on a subject, get a tiny little bug or the absolute center of a flower or whatever small thing you want to take a picture of. So you might be tempted to use your zoom lens. Now in this case I put on an 18 to 250 Tamron lens. Nice lens. With the 250, hello ladies, you can get uh, quite a lot of magnification. So if you want to try that, put your lens on there, you might be disappointed as often happens. I'll demonstrate with the next one photo. That was probably the worst case of vignetting you've ever seen in a photo. It's all because I tried to use a lens that was just too big to use with the Raynox. Now you might think that all zoom lenses won't work, but that's not true. I put on the kit lens you get with most Nikon cameras today, the 18 to 55. The Raynox fits on there somehow. There it goes. And you can zoom out to 55 and get a little more reach and a little closer than you can with a 50 millimeter lens. Also, instead of using the pop-up flash, I tried using my regular flash, which is a Shani SN600 SN, kind of repetitive. I used that on a manual setting with one eighth power. That was a little too much power and I had to go into Photoshop and cut the photos down or darken them up a little bit. But you see they, they do work eventually. Also with this, you put it down it goes down seven degrees. You can barely see that. But from there, it's the regular position and you can go down seven degrees. It's hard to see, but it does make a difference. And you can get some good results that way. You might have to fool around with uh, what power you want to use, 1 8th, 1 16th, 1 32nd depending on the um, lighting conditions. But you'll have to decide that for yourself and see what works for you. I got this set up to work for me. So you'll just have to experiment a little bit. Now that you've seen the sample photos, I hope this video has been helpful in learning how to use flash with the Raynox 250 and a short lens. The short lens is best, size doesn't matter, to achieve some depth of field in your macro photos. You can use the LumaQuest soft screen on your pop-up flash or you can use your regular flash to achieve these effects 
it doesn't matter. But the big lens just doesn't seem to be very useful as far as this goes. So stick to the shorter lens. With a zoom, like the 18 to 55 kit lens, you have to zoom all the way out. But those things seem to work. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope it's been helpful. And stop by again.